does and the world of Ghost, thank God we've got a pastor who prays the Lord. As I'm the overachiever, I begin to rise with the Lord. gave the war of God. And, and be a man of God. And they would just, you know, I just want you set free. Christ from the and I don't know in. that this preacher told you the truth. Suggest align yourself with CGIA and let's go forth and take our communities for Christ. Welcome to CGIA Today. Changing lives through ministry signs and wonders is one part of what CGIA is doing across the North American continent through ministers and individuals that are proclaiming the word of the Lord. Stay tuned coming up on today's broadcast. That which is flesh. That which your spirit is. Keep your light machines. Keep your smoke machines. Give me the Holy Ghost. Give me the glory of God. Give me that anointing that is the atmosphere. God chose you. Ephesians 1.18 says that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what are the riches of his glory and his inheritance in the saints. Oh, I wish I could preach on that for a while. I wish I could preach on that for a while. People of this generation don't understand what God means by an inheritance. An inheritance is something that a father gives to a son, a father gives to a daughter. It's not something that the son has to be ashamed about. It's not something that he deserved. It was given to him because the father loved the son. You see, oh God, I wish I could preach to you. I got to move on, but... You see, when I stand under the anointing of God, I don't do it arguing with the devil whether I'm worthy or not. I know I'm not worthy. I know I didn't die. Oh my God. I know I didn't pray enough, read enough, shout enough, praise enough, learn enough to stand under what God has placed. But I stand under it by right. The reason I do is because there is power in the blood of of Jesus you see the Bible says that we are heirs of salvation Ooh, I wish I could you are an heir oh the Bible says oh. I did I didn't want to go down here I didn't want to go down here I wanted to go another way but I'm just gonna follow the Holy Ghost do you know what it means when the Bible says that we are joint heirs with Christ? Can I give you a moment and tell you that the same Holy Ghost that raised Christ from the dead lives in... same spirit that hovered over the waters in creation that same spirit my god my god my god my god the same holy ghost that descended upon christ lives in you do you understand do you have any comprehension that angels look at you in total wonder. How could the King of Glory, how could the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, how is it possible that He could dwell in vessels made of clay? You see what God has for your life. You have it because the blood says you have it. You are an heir. It is an inheritance. I don't go to my daddy's house and say, Daddy, please, can I have a sandwich? No. 
I go to the fridge. I take the sandwich out of the fridge because I know my dad already said yes. He already said, son, it's yours. I'm the father. You can have it. So why is the church trying to pick around for crumbs when we have an inheritance that says you're above and not beneath? You're an heir of salvation. I wish I could go into an heir of salvation. The word salvation is sozo. That same word is used throughout the New Testament. Guess what? Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. That word save is sozo. But guess what? The woman with the issue of blood, the Bible says that when she touched the hem of his garment, she was sozo. The same word. The same word that was used to save your soul was used for a miracle of healing. I could go through the demon possessed man. The Bible says the legion, when Jesus cast the devils out, he was made whole. He was delivered. Guess what that word is? See church, ever since the fire of God touched me, ever since I've seen what I've seen, I know that there's an inheritance, the power of God, the glory of God, the anointing that breaks every single yoke of bondage. And yet, there are many today who feel around for the crumbs. We're living in times today that totally and utterly at night I will lay awake. Some of the things that are happening in the church today grieve my heart. Oh, do I go here? Do I go here? Jesus said, that which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is I've been in places with so much smoke machines going on, so many strobe lights that I can't see a thing. I used to be in nightclubs, and some of these places make nightclubs look like they're playing at it. I'm in there, I can't see my feet, I can't see the person next to me, and I think to myself, what is going on? Well, we're setting the atmosphere, brother. What atmosphere? That which is flesh, that which is spirit is. Keep your light machines, keep your smoke machines. Give me the Holy Ghost. Give me the glory of God. Give me that anointing that is the atmosphere. Am I against lights? No. Am I against smoke machines? No. But don't try and set an atmosphere that only the Holy Spirit can do. Don't try and stimulate some man's flesh so he worships God. That's why there's no power. That's why there's no anointing. We need the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of truth. We have preachers today that preach there's no hell. I ask the question, if there is no hell, then why did Jesus need to die and raise from the dead? Amen. Jude was writing to the church. He could have given you a long list of his credentials, but he didn't. He just said, a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't want the titles. I go to posters and I, I, I prophet, bishop, no, 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 I think, wow, there's so many names there, that blinds me. When you've been with Jesus, when you've been with the presence of God, you don't want a name, you just want his anointing. You don't want a name, a title, 
You don't want credentials. You don't want a long list of who you are. All you want is the glory of God to cover you. That he might speak through you. That the sick might be set free. Jude was writing to the church. He was calling them back. It was a cry from his heart. It was a cry from the presence of God. There were people coming in and bringing perversion to the grace of God. They were saying to the church of Jesus Christ that you could live how you want to live. Your body was worthless so you could sin all you want. And all it ever did was increase the grace of God. Jude was warning a church to wake up, to realize that there was an attack. Not just upon the church, but upon the faith that had been handed down from Jesus Christ himself. He was crying out to fight. There's a church today that say, well, Jesus already gave me the victory, but he never told you to lay down your weapons. Sometimes you've got to fight. Sometimes you've got to contend for that word over your life. There's a generation today that whatever's landed in their lap, they receive it. And if it doesn't come right to their lap, they think it's not worth anything. Let me tell you what I found in the kingdom today. Whatever you fight for, whatever you contend for, that's something worth holding on to. I want to tell you, Whatever call is on your life, you contend for that call. You fight for it. Don't let the devil take it from you. Don't let some man, some woman come and steal it out of your hands. Sometimes you got to roll up your... Contend for the faith. You got to fight for it. We got to fight for some of the foundational truths that are in the Word of God. That today there's a generation that are removing the landmarks. We're blurring the lines. We're allowing something that the Holy Spirit has entrusted to our lives as truth. To be trampled on. Well, I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now, I ain't lying down. I ain't going to let the devil come and tell me that I have a cheap message that you can live how you want and everyone goes to heaven. My cry are where those filled with the Holy Ghost. Where are those? That God has given a voice that stand together and say, no, this is not the truth. I'm a young man, but I'm calling on fathers in the faith. Speak out. Where are those men that stand up? That say, no. You can't just leave your wife on the curb. Go get another wife and be on the pulpit the next week. No. I know some of you are curling your toes in right now. But I'm telling you, revival doesn't come on the cheap. The anointing's not for sale. God's glory won't rest on mess. We got to see the church begin to contend for truth. To contend for that word in your life.
You know, people tell me God doesn't do miracles anymore. Well, I got news for you, friend. People told me, listen, if you want a television ministry, don't sweat too much, don't shout too much, don't lay hands on everything that moves and, and it'll look good on TV. Well, guess what? TV. Because you know why? When I said yes to Jesus, when I said, Lord, I'm going to contend for the faith. I'm going to declare to the world that through the power of your blood, you can heal us. You can deliver us. You can set us free from every bondage of Satan. When I said yes, Jesus put me on worldwide TV for free. interested in becoming ordained through CGI this fall at the National Conference in Louisville, Kentucky. Visit CGIAmericas.org or call 502-964-3304 extension 1216 for more on how you can be credentialed through CGIA. for because I'm crying out to a generation I'm crying out I know it's not fashionable I know some people say well that's not the way the church is moving we're adapting with the times since when does the church adapt to the times we set the temperature It's the Holy Ghost that sets the temperature that changes a generation. I talked to young people today. I talked to them about the blind eyes opening. About people getting out of wheelchairs. I talked to them about tumors disappearing. And they're looking at me cross-eyed like I just fell from Mars. Because we watered it down. We wanted to make it habitable. We wanted it to be like a sorbet that just cleanses the palate. Because revival's too messy. Revival doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. That's not, that's old stuff. See, the Bible says that Jacob desired Rachel. He worked seven years for her and it seemed like a few days. Rachel was beautiful. She looked good on the outside. But the Bible says that when Jacob toiled for what he thought he desired, one night he was tricked and when he woke up, Leah, the sister of Rachel, was laid in his bed. See, the Bible says that Leah was not attractive. Leah, some theologians say, was cross-eyed. She couldn't see properly. Jacob was laid with someone that he had not desired. He worked for Rachel, but he woke up with Leah. See, there are many people that believe that revival is like Leah. They don't desire it. It doesn't look good. It's too messy. They can't see straight. They want Rachel. They want the church in lights. They want a church that everyone looks at from the world and says, I desire Rachel. But Jacob is now mad because he's laid with Leah. There are 
are some people here tonight that you're in this place and you had a vision of something that looked good. Something that you thought was going to be your ministry. And you're here and you're singing and you're praising but you say, God, why am I laid with Leah? When I thought you were going to give me Rachel. There's a church today. They want to look like Rachel. They want it all together. They want their hair, their clothes, their carpets, their lights, their atmosphere, their shop window. want it to look stunning but the problem is what many times looks good on the outside God's not in Jacob didn't realize that Leo didn't look good on the outside but on the inside, God's favor was in her womb. Jacob worked for Rachel. He toiled and he toiled again to win her heart. And when he got her, she was barren. There are many today. I've sat around tables and they tell me about the next strategy to how to get the womb of their church to begin to birth something. And when I sit there, my heart bleeds inside. Because they want it to look their way, how they want it. They want it to be presented with all. And I'm into excellence, I love it. But you've got to hear my heart. We've got to contend for the real anointing. I don't want adrenaline. I want the presence and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. See, the Bible says... That while Rachel was barren, and I'm going to finish, I'm preaching too long. But you see, while Rachel was barren, she might have looked the part, but inside she was empty. Some of you are here tonight, and it looks good, but inside you're empty. I know people say, well, evangelist, I don't want to look like you. You sweat too much. Do I have to fall down? Oof. Crusades. Well, I've got shoes that I don't want to get dirty. Why do you shout all the time? God's not deaf. He's not nervous either. See, what I found was this. Sometimes God will put his glory in a package that other people do not recognize. But out of their womb, something is birthed that only God can birth. Something that has legacy. Something that is defined by his glory that brings the kingdom of God to pass. Rachel was barren. But Leah began to birth the tribes of Israel. See, my friend, what we contend for today is the legacy of tomorrow. What you fight for now will be tomorrow's generation. God has raised up men throughout history that might not look good, they might not sound good, but out of them came the word of the Lord that changed. A generation. I don't want something that looks good. 
I don't want something that tickles your ears. I said to my wife in privacy, I said, baby, you ever see me on that circuit? You ever see me in that circuit? That engine room of ministry, churning out the next book, churning out the next thing. Get me out! I'm not against books, but you got to hear my heart. Church, we're contending for the faith. We're contending for something that paid the price. Someone who gave it all that we could say tonight, the Holy Ghost is in this place. Last year, I joined this fellowship. I wanted to be around men around the world that are contending for something. Church, we've laid down some of the foundations. They've been covered in dust. It's like we put the Spirit of God in a back room on a Wednesday night for the mature ones. What are we doing? I'm not ashamed of the Holy Ghost. I'm not ashamed of the fire of God. Why should I be ashamed? That's what changed my life. People need to encounter the supernatural power of God. Church, we've got to contend for the presence of God every service, every moment, every waking. I was sat around the table with leaders that spoke to me to tell me that some of the things I believe are old fashioned. That somehow the Word of God had changed. Order today's sermon in its entirety by calling the number on the screen or visit cgiamericas.org for ordering information and to see today's program again. Order your copy of the CGIA 2014 Implantation Conference today online for only $30. It includes all the ministry and miracles of the CGIA National Conference from 2014 plus more. This is a limited time offer, so visit cgiamericas.org and order your copy on DVD today. Join us next week at the same time for CGIA Today and stay connected with us online and on Facebook and Twitter.